very much, Ronnie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. I'm afraid everyone else is lying down. And you? I'm waiting for the fireflies to come out. Hmm. The last place the light goes from is the lake. But when it's really dark, the lake's darker than anything. Water reflects the light. Will you have a drink, Ronald? If you'll have one, too. Whiskey, if I may. Kesha, ek borough peg or ek Tom Collins lie here. Oh, you feel I need a borough peg, then? I don't know about need. Deserve. <laughs> Haven't you had a rest? I've been writing letters. Mm. Well, one letter. To father in Germany about the wedding. They'll be in the Nora soon. Teddy and Susan. Yes. I've really come to say goodbye. I'm off to Calcutta first thing in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the signal was waiting for me when I got back from the station. Things are on the move. Will you write to me sometimes? Yes, of course. Thank you. Bus. Cheers. I'm glad you were alone. I wanted to apologize. That stone that someone chucked this morning was meant for me. It sounds melodramatic, but persecution of that kind's been going on ever since I left my apport. That stone and that unpleasant scene at the platform. I was the worst best man Teddy could have chosen. Oh, no. It made me feel ridiculous. As though I have something to hide. When all I want is to forget. I hope your mother, in particular, understands that. I'm not unconscious of my obligation to her. We all understand. Thank you. But I don't really understand about the woman at the station. Was she the mother of one of the boys who got arrested? His aunt. Uh, the man who was with her put her up to it. He knows there's nothing I can do. The case is useful to him. It serves his purpose. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye, bye, bye. Mad woman. Some mad woman.
What was she like? The girl in the Mayapur business? Rather like you. No, not physically. Well, um, not as pretty. She was a bit clumsy. She made a joke of it. But she was sensitive. The kind of girl you could talk to. Although our backgrounds were quite different. Were you in love with her? I don't know. I thought I was, for a while. But if I was, it wasn't love at first sight. I thought she was another of those English girls who come over here with a bee in their bonnets about the rotten way we treat Indians. She didn't see why a line had to be drawn. Has to be drawn, but it's essential, isn't it? Poor Daphne tried to do without all that. I tried to stop her and found out she wasn't just another English girl with a bee in her bonnet. She was this girl. And uh, it wasn't a bee. I don't know what it was. But it destroyed her. I'm sorry. I said she was like you, and I'm describing all the things that made her different. Uh, but then, this may sound impertinent. No, I'm sure it won't. Well, uh, that first morning when I joined you at the station restaurant and you sat in the front of the car next to the driver, I thought, please, forgive me, I thought, here's another one who doesn't see why the line has to be drawn. That's why I started talking about young Cassie. I think subconsciously he'd impressed me as being a man of Harry Kumar's type. Harry Kumar? Oh, the chief suspect in the case. The man she was friendly with. In that car, there was a sort of fantasy in my mind of Harry and Daphne about to come together again. But uh, I was wrong. Mr. Cassim knows where the line has to be drawn, doesn't he? Oh, so do you. I can't speak for Mr. Cassim. Well, then, for yourself. What are we talking about, Ronald? The social pressure that keeps the ruled at arm's length from the rulers, or the biological pressure that makes a white girl afraid of being touched by an Indian. I think they're connected. A white man, I or Teddy, for example, if one's taste ran that way, could marry an Indian woman or live with her. He'd have the dominant role, whatever the color of his skin. But an Indian man touching a white-skinned woman would always be conscious that he's... What's the word? Diminishing her. And she'd be conscious of it, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I put it very badly. And I've broken one of the sacred rules. One isn't supposed to talk about that kind of thing. One isn't supposed to talk about anything very much. I know. It's how we hide our prejudices and go on living with them. Would you say goodbye for me? And um, apologize to your family. I expect Aunt Fanny will be out in a while. No, I really must be going. I'm only half packed. Well, there's a firefly. <laughs> the end of your vigil. <laughs> It's alive with Japs. First evidence of the enemy is Jap booty captured in a previous encounter. Evidence of the turn of the tide of war, clearing the Arakan of Japanese strongholds. On the lookout for snipers. Duck your head over the next hill, sign Tojo, and its sound advice as Allied bombers go into action. The 
Japs retreat, but wary soldiers search the area for snipers left behind. A Jap hideout. Japan boasts her soldiers never retreat, never lose their nerve, fight bravely to the death rather than face capture. Well, here's the truth. A Jap soldier surrendering as frightened as a cornered rabbit. Wounded prisoners are taken back for first aid. A captured flag marks the end of the engagement, but there's excitement ahead. In fact, Dorothy Lamour, three jungles up, to say nothing of Tarzan. You have a question, Lady Manners? Yes. I'm afraid I've forgotten your name. Rowan. Rowan. It's a curious thing, memory. My husband had an excellent one, a great asset to a governor. You were in Burma, Captain Rowan? Uh, until my dose of fever. And shall you go back to active service? Uh, no, no, I'm told not. I've applied to get back into the political department, which is what I've always wanted. Have you the photograph there? Uh, H.E. gave me an envelope which he said you might ask for. I'd like to see it, if I may. Would you unseal it for me? You can see Candy Pat now. I should explain, before we reach the prison, I shall pull down the blinds over the window. I have all the necessary documents to pass us through the gates. Would you like me to go through the arrangements? I'm sure H.E. has arranged everything as I would wish. But in case I forget to say it afterwards, Captain Ryan, thank you for everything you've done for me. These proceedings are authorized by order of the governor in council. The purpose is to examine any facts relevant to your detention under the Defense of India rules. I am instructed to advise you that the purpose of the proceedings is only to examine and not to make a recommendation in regard to your detention. I now ask you, do you agree to this examination? Huh. Do you wish it to be conducted in English or in Hindi? Angrezi. Sorry. I mean in English. I s seldom have an opportunity of speaking English to anyone but myself. I see. Then we will proceed in English. Your name is Kumar, your given name Hari, son of the late Duleep Kumar of Didbury in the county of Berkshire. <laughs> Honestly, Mildred, that's a laugh. <laughs> you say someone threw a stone at the Nawab's car. <laughs> Teddy and the best man were in it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you're amused. Well, it must admit it does have its comic side. <laughs> oh, Teddy at the altar with a, a lump of sticking plaster on his face. Only 72 hours of honeymoon and has to buzz off and fight the jack. <laughs> Why did Susan take it? Susan was splendid. She saved the day. And it's not comic for her. Back to life as bloody usual in Pancott and in the bloody grace and favour too. 
I must say, she's looking radiant for grass with it. No, but you don't suppose that... Oh, really, Nicky, I don't suppose anything. This whole stupid business could have been avoided if Captain Merrick could only said. What? What he should have said to Teddy. That he was the policeman in that ghastly manners case. And he'd been tracked down ever since. Then why didn't he? Perhaps because he wanted to be best man. <laughs> Seems rather an off thing to do, I mean, Teddy's fellow officer. He's hardly there. I thought you said he was. Nicky, Captain Merrick is not a muzzy guide. In fact, he's scarcely a gentleman at all. Not Todd Drop. <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> oh, well. How's that? Sarah making the fourth. I would like to return for a moment to the time when District Superintendent Merrick made what you claim was an obscene remark. You had refused to answer any questions. Because Merrick had refused to give me the reason for my arrest. But then at 22.45, you made the statement, as it appears on the DSP's report, I haven't seen Miss Manners since the night we visited the temple. Yes. And until this examination, you have persistently refused to make any other statement? Yes. How long did the interrogation continue? I lost track of things like time. Two hours? More? Could have been. So you were alone with the examining officer for two hours or more? No. Other people came in after a bit. The two constables? There may have been others. It seemed like it. Are you saying you were confused? A little giddy, perhaps, standing for a long time. I wasn't standing then. You were allowed to sit? No. I don't understand. You were not standing, but you were not sitting. What were you doing? Lying down? I was bent over a trestle. Bent over a trestle? Tied to it. For the more persuasive part of the interrogation. You told us you were naked. Were you physically ill-treated? A cane was used. You say you were caned? How many times were you hit? I don't know. Six times? Twelve times? More than twelve? I didn't count. You have no idea? Did you lose consciousness? It's very difficult to breathe in that position. It's all you think of in the end. After a time, they brought Video Saga down to hear me confess. But I said nothing. Then Merrick sent everyone out. We were alone. He spoke and acted even more obscenely. That is the second allegation of obscenity you have made against an officer of the Indian police. But the word is not precise. You must give examples so that anyone reading the report can judge whether its use is justified or not. He asked me if I was enjoying it. He said, aren't you enjoying it? Surely a randy fellow like you doesn't exhaust himself just having it once. He had his hand between my legs at the time. Strike that from a record. Delete everything that followed the prisoner's statement we were alone. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. I'm answering your questions. I put it to you that you are. You still have an opportunity to retract. I advise you to think most carefully whether you should take that opportunity. I have nothing to retract. I'm sorry. I seem to have misunderstood. Misunderstood the questions? No reasons for asking them. I made the wrong guess. Something's happened to her, hasn't it? You mean Miss Manners? Yes. I agreed to this examination because I thought Daphne had finally persuaded someone to believe the truth. This begins to smell of an uneasy conscience. Something's happened to her, and I'm the loose end you want to tie up. 
what's happened. Is she dead? I've sometimes felt it, but... She is. I should have said. You should have told me. We presumed you knew. She died of peritonitis. That's blood poisoning, isn't it? Burst appendix, that sort of thing. I gather the peritonitis was the result of a caesarean operation. Caesarean? I see. She married? No. She didn't marry. I see. Do you still have nothing to retract? No. Nothing. Nothing. Auntie Mabel, are you sleepy? Yes, but not tired. I've reached the age, you know, when if I sit down and do nothing, I just drop off. So if you and Barbie would excuse me, there are some drawers I should turn out. Oh, don't you need me to help you? Oh, Aziz can do it. It's something he enjoys. <laughs> you stay and talk to Sarah. I mustn't stay too long. There's something... I still don't understand. Who was the Indian woman at the station? The aunt of the boy Miss Manners is supposed to have been infatuated with. He's still in prison. Kneeling at Captain Merrick's feet, beseeching him. <coughs> Poor woman. He said they were exploiting her, using her as part of a scheme to make him look like a marked man. He hadn't seen her since he'd left Mayapur. Oh, did he remember my friend, Edwina Crane? Oh, I'm sorry, I never thought to ask. Well, I don't suppose he did. Although, as DSP in Mayapur, he must have known all about her being attacked. But he did have his hands full with that other awful business, didn't he? Wasn't he supposed to be in love with her? Miss Manners, I mean. He said he'd been attracted to her. He made it sound like a confession, as if he was determined to be honest about the whole thing. But all the time, I felt he wasn't. I don't know why I felt that. But everything he said sounded rehearsed. And while he was saying it, I felt him watching for the effect, knowing what it would be. You didn't like him? No. I don't think I liked him at all. What did you say? Did I say anything? I'm sorry, I thought you did. You seem to be haunted by it. That's what I was thinking. I've had whole awful business. Someone should be haunted by it. Yes, I suppose we should. Oh, don't go just yet. There's something I want you to take to Susan. I won't be a moment. All right. Lady Manners, are you all right? Yes. He spoke the truth. I'm glad you felt that. Sitting close to him, it was painfully apparent that he did. You never mentioned to him that you remembered him at school, at, at Chillingborough. It seemed unnecessary. Kumar will be released. To what? No matter. I've had my amusement. Amusement? Isn't it all a charade? We go back into our corners and try to guess the word. Harry Kumar, too, and Mr. Merrick. Nothing can happen to Mr. Merrick, can it? 
the uncorroborated evidence of a prisoner. That's part of the charade, too. Wedding and 21st birthday present. Apostle Spoons. I'd be so grateful if you take them to her. Thank you, Barbie. That's very kind. I thought I ought to tell you I may be leaving Pancot. Oh, Sarah. Why? Where to? Just to do something more useful. Nursing, perhaps, or what I'm doing now, but where the war's a bit closer. Do you think that's selfish? Why selfish? Because of leaving Mother and Susan. With Daddy a prisoner of war, it seems to be my job to help look after things. Well, Susan's a married woman now. Yes. That's why I thought I'd go. Of course, I, I should miss you dreadfully. So would everyone. But it would be wrong to hold you back. That would be selfishness. Thank you for Susan's present. Please don't bother to see me off. Say goodbye to Auntie Mabel for me. Of course. Oh, no. Hello, Barbie. Sarah's gone. She asked me to say goodbye. We're sorting out some winter things. Oh, no, Aziz. How oh, bond is this deep? I bought it in London the last summer I was there, so you can tell how out of date it is. But every winter, Aziz tries to make me bring it out because of the tag. Bond is this, Pakka? Well, you could shorten the skirt. Huh? Shorten the skirt? <sighs> Very well, Aziz. Put it on this part. Linsa, Sara Bacha. That's a christening gown. Was it Sarah's? Huh, Sarah me. Look, butterfly. Butterflies. Oh, but it's beautiful. My mother gave it to me when I married, for my children. But of course, I never had any of my own. So I saved it for my stepson, for when he had children. Did Susan wear it too? No, Mildred had something new for her. There's a full length of it still unmade up. Not for a shawl. As he is, show Bobby Mem the piece. It's exquisite. Look, they're caught up in the web. Poor prisoners. Would you like that piece? The me? It, it's too beautiful. So delicate. Alive. Aziz will keep it safe. Had one too. Oh, Mrs. John Layton, Miss Sarah Layton, and Mrs. Edward Bingham request the pleasure of your company at the officers' mess, the Pancot Rifles. RSVP. It's Susan's 21st. I had a note from Susan too, thanking me for the Apostle Spoons. She says the wedding presents will be displayed. I expect you'd like to go. Well, only if you go too. Well, I shall have to but I want to come away before they start eating. I can't bear eating standing up, but Mildred knows that. She won't mind. Well, eating in crowds gives me indigestion, too. We can just slip away. But what shall I wear? I did see some heliotrope stuff in the bazaar. 
If only we could get down into Randpour for some shopping. We have two weeks. I shall never go to Randpour again. At least not until I'm buried. Buried? St. Luke's churchyard there, where my husband is. St. Luke's, whom God has joined. I hadn't thought. You could wear the heliotrope, Barbie. It's such a happy colour. Yes. Yes, I think I could carry it. Susan says all the young officers will want to meet you. You must be the grandmother of the regiment, I suppose. It's years since I've visited the nest. <laughs> we shall go. Is it Ghulam? Ghulam Muhammad? Yes, ma'am, sir. I think we're late. It's very crowded. You both made it. Hello, Auntie. Oh, it's so nice of you to come. And thank you for the marvelous present. Hello, Barbie. Hello, Susan. Mabel, you know Kevin Coley, don't you? Yes, I am. I'm the oldest captain in the regiment now, deputising for Susan's father. I think I met you once with John. Yes. Seems to be keeping his spirits up in prison camp. From what I hear, I did. Well, of course, he can't write many letters. But Sarah brings me all the news. Where is Sarah? It's awful Daddy can't be here all the same. Auntie, come and meet General and Mrs. Rankin. Kevin will introduce you. Yes, of course. She wasn't at the door, unless I missed her. How awful if I did. She was here a minute ago. I'll see if I can find her. Oh, thank you. These poor feet in this dreadful crush. Oh, there she is now. Hello, Barbie. Oh, what a nice suit. Is Mabel all right, do you think? I feel I ought to be with her, but there were so many. They've got her a chair over there. Several young men are looking after her, and she's absolutely fine. We're slipping away, you know, before the buffet. Yes, I know. Uh, have you changed your mind? I mean, about the presents. Susan did say they would be on display, but perhaps it proved too difficult. No, they're on the table there. Shall we go and look? Oh, yes, I must. Then I'll see you later, Barbie. <laughs> well, this is Captain Webb. This is Lee. And, uh, Barbara? This is Captain... Here they are. I say, splendid display. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, I think Wavell's the best viceroy we've had and knows anything about the country. Oh, Mrs. Paynton. And then, of course, he's a soldier. It's what you'd expect. In a box. What did you say? I mean, I agree. A splendid mistake. Absolutely splendid. So many things. You know, I've never been in a mess before. I mean, a mess with a capital M. Isn't that odd? Or don't you think so? 
I suppose this room is the ante room. Is that the right nomenclature? Oh, look, there's the canteen of silver. I'm sure I saw another toaster. Are you looking for something special? No. They're not here. Oh, excuse me. Barbara, do be careful. I think we'd better stand back. Yes. I can't expect. <laughs> Such a crush. I've forgotten how to cope with crowds. I can't hear myself think, but then one never can. Or can you? Are you all right? I sometimes wonder how many of those children did I bring to God? There were 12, you see, apostles. I was alone. Mrs. Layton. Mrs. Layton Senior, the lady in the grey hat and scarf. She was sitting in this chair. Oh no, she went, I think. But she can't help. Thank you. Barbie, is it time for us to go? I lost you. Mm. We can go out the back way, through the corridor. If you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. Susan's going to have a baby, Mildred told me. So Sarah's decided not to go away. The regimental silver. Exactly as it was when I first saw it 40 years ago. Whilst how many starved. Nothing has changed. No, I'm not even angry. Someone should be. Jamidar Gaje Gali. He lives again in memory. That moment when, wounded in his arm, in his chest and in his leg, he went on fighting. Covered in blood from his neglected wounds, he led his men into a hand-to-hand -hand fight with the enemy. For superb courage, the Victoria Cross. Chelaram, what he did saved countless lives, and he died. This is his widow and his child. For her, it's all strange and bewildering. Chelaram was her husband. Now the Viceroy comes to tell her that Chelaram was a hero. Now widow and child are brought forward to meet the Viceroy. Other wives are watching. The Commander-in-Chief's wife. The wife of the Viceroy himself. Now he's giving her Taylor Ram's medal. The Victoria Cross. And she hears the world told how Company Havildar Major Taylor Ram rallied his men under fire with no thought for his own danger despite his serious wounds. 
how his men, inspired by his example, fought off the enemy with bayonets, sticks and rocks picked up from the western desert. How he was wounded again and died, still leading his men. And the Allied assault on Casino continues with heavy fighting in all areas. Meanwhile in Delhi, it has been strongly denied that the Japanese forces which have passed the Tinwin have cut off the British and Come in. to defending his power. The Supreme Commander has informed the member for defense you want to that see his power is strongly held while intense ah, fighting yes. continues in the area of Kohima. Bad news, I'm afraid. Yes, sir, it is. I didn't mean the war, I'm afraid. This is personal. Would you like to sit? We've had a signal through Calcutta. I thought it best to tell you first. I'm sorry. I see. What a terrible, terrible thing. I'll ring my wife. We'll all do what we can. Thank you. I'd better go now. Well, won't you wait a minute before you go? You've had a shock. No, it's better like this. I mean better than just a telegram arriving. Yes, of course. Sarah, I'm very sorry. speak to mother. What's wrong? Teddy's been killed. It's not about Daddy. I'm sorry. Daddy. Would someone get my drink? Where's Susan? Asleep on the veranda. I'll go out and try to tell her. Perhaps someone should ring Dr. Travis in case she takes it badly. Do you want me to? No, Bobby, I can manage. Lunchtime already? No, I've come back early. You come on badly or something? No, it's not bad. Should we help Auntie Mabel with the flowers? You'll get as big as a house if you lie around all day. As big as a house already? They give me the day off. Sort of. Why? Something's happened. 
and I have to tell you about it, and I don't know how to. So I think I'd better just say it straight. It's about Teddy. The signal came this morning. It says Teddy's been killed. So that's what we have to start believing. If there was any doubt about it, I wouldn't. But it does. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who was that? The Padre and his wife. They said they'd only look in. I told them Dr. Travers wanted to keep quiet. I never cared much for Teddy, you know. So I can't pretend to be bowled over. And I don't think Susan really loved him. She was very secretive about the honeymoon. At least she was with me. Did she say anything to you? No. I don't think Teddy was... very experienced. Not that that's important. Although it is if there's a lack of consideration too, and that's how he struck me. I rather hope that muzzy guide friend of his would cut him out. But he never even tried. What are we going to eat? Sue said she doesn't want anything. Uh, there's some cold chicken and salad. But you must tell Mahmoud to get up a tray for her. She can't not eat. Come in. We didn't stop. It was my husband she wanted to see. Would you like a drink? Well, not for me, thanks. Darling? Well, I, I wouldn't refuse a gimlet. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. It's very sad. She's asked for a memorial service, which seems suitable. I shall be happy to arrange it for her. Not happy, darling. No. No, of course not. Happy to be of use. I thought on Saturday week, if you agree, Mrs. Layton, then I can announce it next Sunday at Matins and Evensong. If it's what Susan wants. Thank you. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it seems she does. 